the SUMIFS function in Microsoft Excel. In this video, we'll explore the SUMIFS function, but first, we're going to build our foundation a little bit with the SUMIF function. We'll delve into the basics of these powerful functions and we'll explore how they can help you analyze and summarize your data efficiently. In Excel, most of us use the SUM function somehow, but often we need a little bit more. Let's break down the syntax and we can see how they differ and how they're the same. The sum if function adds up values in a range that meet a single criterion. The syntax is equals, sum if, and then open parentheses. The first argument is range. This is the range of cells that you want to evaluate using the criteria. The criteria, the second argument, is the condition or criteria that determines which cells to sum. It can be a number, expression, cell reference, or a text string as long as you use quotation marks. The next argument is optional, it's sum range. This specifies the actual cells to sum. If omitted, Excel will sum the cells in the range. The SUMIFS function adds up the values in a range that meet multiple criteria. Here's a look at the syntax, equals SUMIFS, open parentheses. Then we have sum range. This argument represents the range of cells that contain the values that you want to sum. Then criteria range one. This is the first range of cells that you want to evaluate based on the criteria. Basically, Excel will compare the values in this range against that corresponding criteria. The next argument, which is the third in SUMIFS, criteria one. This is the criteria that you want to apply to the first criteria range. It defines the condition that cells in criteria range one must meet in order to be included in the sum. Then a chance for more. These are optional, and these arguments represent additional ranges of cells and their associated criteria. A few key points to remember, SUMIFS allows you to specify multiple criteria. It'll also only sum the values that meet all of the specified conditions. Each criteria range, the argument, must be the same size and shape as the other argument, which is sum range. And again, the criteria can be a number, expression, cell reference, or a text that defines which cells will be added. We can use logical operators like greater than, less than, equal to, between, and so on to define your criteria. One of the coolest features of SUMIFS is the use of wildcards. You can use an asterisk or a question mark if you need to do partial matching when summing things up. Very quickly, some of the common problems you might experience is to see a zero, which is usually an unexpected result. Just make sure that criteria one and two are in quotation marks if you're testing for text values like a person's name or a company name. Let's check it out. Here within the practice file, we can see tabs on the bottom. We have a tab for sum if examples, then we have them compared because we also have some sum if s examples separately. There's a tab to explore wildcards and also a very cool feature where we can spill data into multiple cells. That means we have multiple criteria from the same column. On this sheet, we'll explore the SUMIF function. Remember, the SUMIF function adds up values in a range that meet a single criterion. In the first example, we'll sum sales based on a product. What we'll do is type equals SUMIF and then open parentheses. The first argument is the range. We want to sum up the total sales where the product is glue sticks. So I can either type in the range which is B2 to B29. Or I could select it, and if the data is formatted as an Excel table, you'll see the names of the structured references. We can see this is from table one and from the product column. Either way is acceptable. It depends on how your data is laid out. Select your range, press comma, then we need to specify criteria. For this, we wanna base it on product and sum up glue sticks. So in quotes, type in the criteria, then comma, and then we'll select the range that we want to sum up. For this one, it's going to be E2 to E29. Or you can make a selection and use this reference. I'm gonna end the parentheses, press enter, and there we go. We've summed the sales of just glue sticks. In the next one, we'll sum the sales made by a specific customer. So let's say we want to sum total sales where the customer is Sam Thompson. I'm gonna type in equals sum if, and we're going to basically say 
by the name of Sam Thompson, make sure it's in quotes, comma, and then whenever they're found, sum up whatever is in this column. I'm going to press enter, and there we go. There are other ways that we can use SUMIF as well. For example, instead of typing in the value here manually, we could refer to another cell. When we do that, it still works. And if we set up something like data validation, then everything is going to update as we make our changes. And also, as this table either grows or shrinks, and all of the formulas will dynamically update automatically. Next, let's calculate the sum of total sales where the store location is downtown. For this example, equals sum if the range F2 to F29, the criteria is downtown, or we can make our selection, store location, comma, the sum range is E2 to E29, the total sales column. Press enter, and there we go. Then if we want to sum the sales above a certain threshold, this way, we're using the same column. Type in equals sum if, then the range, which is the total sales column, comma, and then in quotes, greater than 100, end quote, and then a comma, and then the same range. That's going to be our sum range. Again, E2 to E29, press enter, and this adds up all of the sales that are over $100. If we compare what we can do with the sum if function, against the sum if s function, it is slightly different. The sum if function adds up values in a range that meet a single criterion, whereas the sum if s function adds up the values in a range that meet multiple criteria. In this example, if we use sum if, we would type equals sum if, open parentheses, and then c2 to c29 would be our range. The second argument would be criteria, which is going to be Sam Thompson, and comma, what range are we summing up? The total cost, which is E2 through E29. I'll end the parentheses, press enter, and there we go, $392. If we use the sum if s function, I'm going to type in equals sum if s, open parentheses, then we'll select our range, which is going to be E2 to E29. This differs from sum if. We're putting in the sum range first instead of third. I'll type comma, then our criteria range. This is criteria range one, which will be C2 colon C29. Then we put in our criteria. In quotes, Sam Thompson, end quote, and in parentheses, I'm going to press enter, and we get the same answer. Just remember, we're using sum if s for a single condition. If we wanted to add the total cost of orders placed by Sam Thompson, but just for the town center store location, then we have to use sum if s. In this case, I'm going to type in sum if s, open parentheses, the sum range, which is E2 to E29, comma, criteria range 1, which is C2 to C29. Criteria 1 is going to be Sam Thompson, in quotes, comma, then criteria range 2, which is going to be F2 to F29, comma, and now in quotes, town center, end parentheses. I'm going to press enter, and there we go. We did it, $130. As we move on to a few more SUMFS examples, we can sum up sales based on a product, by a specific customer, or for a specific store location. Let's say you want to sum sales based on a partial product name. For example, using sum if s to sum up the totals range with the criteria range of product, but the criteria being in quotes, asterisk, the word stick, and then another asterisk. Of course, an ending quote and parentheses. Pressing enter, we found $195. It searched for everything containing the word stick. So that includes sticky notes and glue sticks. All of those added up, totals $195. Perfect. Then we could sum sales made by customers with similar names. Let's say we wanted to sum up the total sales where the customer's name starts with J. 
All we would do is in quotes, type in J and then asterisk and quotes. And there we go, $406. And let's say we wanted to find stores ending in the word park. Put an asterisk at the beginning, then the word park. And there we go, $963. If we wanted to use a question mark and not be quite as broad, we can be really specific. For example, if something doesn't seem right and we want to search for more than just town center, we could put a question mark where the T is if maybe that letter is in question. In this case, it found $130. Now if we change that to town center, it's $98. There it is, it's town center. We're gonna change that to center, press enter, and it's updated. Very cool. Lastly, let's check out multiple criteria from the same column. We can use SUMFS to look in our table within the sales column, for example, as our sum range, comma, then the first criteria is going to be customer. I want to search for Jordan Davis, comma, and sum up sales from the store location of downtown. I'll press enter and I get $237. Now let's say we want to do the same thing here. I'm going to paste that in. We have $237 as well but that's our downtown location for Jordan Davis. If I open this up and make my first criteria instead of just Jordan Davis, actually referencing I-7, I'm going to select all three of those names. So this time, instead of referencing a cell for that argument, I'm referencing a range. And when I press enter, what that does is spills the data into these other cells. And that way, as we change these, we can see everything updated from an individual or from a range. Hopefully this was helpful. To me, this function is so simple, but so valuable. I encourage you to give it a try.